least 50% on your electricity bill. Who would be interested in a new energy source whose raw feedstock is water? Who would be interested in an energy source that is non-polluting? In this talk, I shall look at this new technology, which has just been introduced by a company called Brilliant Light Energy. They are located at 493 Old Trenton Road, Cranbury, New Jersey. They are in disparity with us. We're on the West Coast, they're on the East Coast. I will give you their inspirations, I will give you some science, I will give you some applications, and I will tell you the expected time frame of rollout for our guest first will be in Canada. <laughs> the inspiration for these are two great scientists. The first, the great Sir Isaac Newton, the father of physical sciences, probably the greatest physical science that ever lived. Newton's laws of motion, three of them gravity, and of course, co-inventor with Leibniz of the calculus. James Clark Maxwell, who between 18, the Scottish physicist, who between 1864 and 1871 laid down Maxwell's equations from which we get all electromagnetic propagation, radio, television, cell phone, still being used today. First, a bit of chemistry. This universe, save two elements, is 1% everything else. Every boron, nickel, iron is about 1% of the universe. Helium, perhaps 1%. The humongous 98% hydrogen. It would stand to reason that dark matter, if it exists, is almost certainly hydrogen. If you go to the Watt Company website, you will see the following, along with everything else I'm about to tell you this evening. They have identified spectral emissions showing events in deep space that appear to be dark matter being formed, releasing greatest amounts of energy. They have been able to duplicate and replicate this not only in their own lab, five other labs throughout the United States. Videos on the website, testimonials on the website by PhDs at places like Rowan University, Glasgow University. Again, the spectral emissions. <coughs> they can do it in the lab. Here is the process. They take the raw material is hydrogen, actually water. They make a solid form. They induce what they call is a hydrino. Here's the definition of hydrino. It's congruent with dark matter. This is from the company CEO Randall, R-A-N-D-E-L-L, Militia L, Mills, M-I-L-S, M-D, Harvard University, 1986. Take the iconic Empire State Building in New York City. If you blow the hydrogen atom up to scale, the electron is a small coin at the 100th floor. At street level, the proton, notice the disparity in heights, is another coin, small coin. Everything else is space. Imagine that that is not the ground state. Imagine there's a way to achieve a fractional orbit releasing energy at the 25th floor. Same spectral emission, that process in the lab, the labs, and in deep space. Therefore, we know there's a congruence. You take it, you do the, the hydrino, and then you capture some of the energy. Voila, rinse, repeat. If you look at the company website, again, their former name was Blacklight Power, you can go to Brilliant Energy, you will see that from early June of 2016, and quite frankly, they're cussing, they are actually melting the thermocouples. 
the thermocouples, two of them, would melt at 2,800 degrees Celsius. That's about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Humongous amounts of energy being generated. What they propose to do is this. They are going to actually construct a black body so they can radiate that energy out in a form that they can capture photovoltaically. As you may know, photovoltaic technology has advanced greatly in the past four and a half decades. So here's the process again. Raw feedstock is water. In New Jersey, you can get it from the air. Solidified, the hydrino is introduced or induced. We know this because it is, has the same spectral emission in the labs as are seen in deep space, dark matter, congruency there. Energy is let off as it moves to the lower ground state, radiates through a black body. They intend to use silver. It'll be captured photovoltaically, either with a concentrator if they go for the ultraviolet or without a concentrator if they're going in the visible light. They're achieving approximately 180 times over unity. The cost. For those of you who are not aware, there's a great disparity in kilowatt hour cost throughout the United States. United States. The cheapest production is hydroelectric. Cheapest two states, check the figures last year, Washington, which has the Columbia River, many rivers, eight and three quarter cents. Idaho next door, nine and a quarter. Most expensive, the two outlying states. Hawaii and Alaska. Hawaii is over 20 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity. That's the per kilowatt hour cost. This company is going to produce it for five. They will sell, they will lease it to you on a per diem basis based on your highest baseline. You could start an arc welding company. That's the per kilowatt hour. Capital cost, the cheapest cost, the least expensive is turbines. Natural gas turbines. Now turbines are ubiquitous in this culture. We see them in a precious few cars, some trucks, many mid-sized <coughs> ships. Most of your frigates and corvettes are running, frig uh, running gas turbines. And of course, every jet aircraft. In that case, they're running JP-4 kerosene or JP-9 if it's an SR-71 or YF-12A. Again, cheaper. The capital cost is going to be at least 50% lower than natural gas. No pollution. Feedstock is water over unity. Here is where the company is going to roll out first. I wish it were in Santa Monica. <laughs> because of some existing contractual arrangements based on a previous version of the technology, which again you can see on the website, they had a public demonstration that wasn't practically effective, it didn't, wasn't able to sustain power. They're going to roll it first in Canada on a pilot basis about one year from now, again through a power production contract. The actual service life of the machinery is going to be 20 years. There are no moving parts. The pumps are magnetic. 20 years with a 10-year overhaul. I believe, and again, they had a public demonstration on June the 28th. You can see the two-hour and 20-minute video. You can read the replications. I have read the 183-page patent application. This is a real technology. And at some of the public demonstrations, they've had some of the replicators standing up and saying, we're not quite sure how they do it, however they're doing it. And the most important reason I know this is real, this company has raised approaching $100 million of venture capital in the last 20 years. And quite frankly, venture capitalists of that level have better ability to raise money and check things out. You can believe me, they're checking it before they 
part with their hard-earned cash. In this talk, I've accomplished the following. I've taken a sweeping look at a new form of energy. I've given you the inspirations, Sir Isaac Newton and James Clark Maxwell. I've given you the model of the hydrogen and atom. I've given you the application, the black body, the raw feedstock, told you the production, compared it to current capital and operational costs, told you the lifespan, told you the first rule out in Canada about a year from now, second you know, half of 2017, full rollout in Canada about two years from now. I thank you for your attention to this matter, and now we have time for questions and answers. Barbara. Who pays for the initial installation? Is it the complaint? I've got a bunch of questions. <laughs> <laughs> is it the consumer or is it the government? What is the initial cost of it? And in the long run, is it actually going to be more expensive? Because if the consumer has to pay for the initial installation, then yes, their monthly bill may be low, but they may be paying more in the initial okay. installation. Or is this something that the government? It's a pay? no. It's they do not intend to seek government funds. I can tell you that it's all through private money, and it will. It's a power production contract. In other words, they own the equipment. The proposed for their model two years ago worked like this. They were going to have a, there would be headquarters, there would be a Canadian distributor and a local distributor in Canada. And they actually were going to do it as, if you're paying 12 cents a kilowatt hour, we'll charge you six. So basically, there's no upfront capital cost, and they basically said, look, we're going to charge the equivalent of five cents a kilowatt hour on a per diem. You'll pay per diem. So if you basically, if you want to run arc welding, if you want to start an ice skating rink, it's worth it. Let me also point out the following. If you're an industrial plant especially, you are willing to pay a little bit of a premium because this is on site, 24, 7, 365. You're not dependent on the grid. This will allow people to go off grid. By the way, this along with industrial <coughs> hemp will make the petrodollar obsolete because the hemp would take care of all the lubrication things. This takes care of all of the energy. Mm -hmm. I'm quite skeptical of being the skeptic that I am. Um, you can't get something from nothing. I don't understand how, and you haven't explained any of the caveats to this. Okay. Let, uh, thank you for the question. First of all, go to the website. I urge you to make sure that I'm not hallucinating. <laughs> this is a new, sometimes I do hallucinate. <laughs> this is a chemical reaction. You all, for all the chemists, you understand when you move something to a lower orbit, you release energy. And what they figured out as a way is to duplicate and replicate what's happening in deep space. That's the mock. In other words, you take it from the 100th floor to the 25th floor, you can read the applications, you can see the demos, you can watch the thermocouples melting. Something's going on there. You have another question. Yeah, so, can you explain the difference then between solar and this, uh, cost-wise, and how they've set up solar right so, now? Solar is, solar is relatively expensive, it, 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 it has a high capital cost, it has a low low kilowatt hour cost, it has a relatively high capital cost. It is, it's come down greatly in the last 40 years. It's now fairly competitive and it continues to go down in cost. And this technology will take, avail itself of all the advances in photovoltaic capture technology. More questions, we had this late So if I buy a tiny house, you can, they, they intend to have applications for, the first will be start off stationary, just like Rudolph Diesel made the diesel engine and he intended for the farmers could make their own fuel, peanut oil, peanut shells. The first application is going to be stationary. Then they intend to be motive and eventually air motive. You know, Airbus is made an electric jet. We have to, so. One is, what's the output? And uh, 
so there's going to be wastewater, supposedly, and uh, what then does the water have to be pure coming in, or can I use ocean water? Can this be made the pure? I don't know if you can use salt water. Uh, the answer is there is no pollutants known, and they're getting 180 times over unity. In other words, they're putting out, they're putting in X amount of energy to start this off, and they're getting out 180 times that, based on the calculations. I ran it on my calculator. We have time for one more question. Can you please explain the 20-year lifetime with 10 overhaul? I didn't understand that. The only sort of moving pump is the magnetic pump, and therefore it's expected there would be an overhaul at the 10-year mark, and would have a 20-year lifespan, which is pretty general, you know, for this type of equipment. There's, these things require regular maintenance, which would be provided by the, the person you have your power production contract with. I thank you for your attention. The time is up. I return control of the meeting to the great Carter